Hello everyone, this is Carrie with Everwood Creations. Today we are going to talk about merging and welding your vectors in Vectric VCarve. I am using Vectric VCarve Pro version 9.519. There are newer versions available, so remember, your software might look a little different to mine if you are using a newer or older version. Now, let's get right to it. The Object Merge tools consist of the first three buttons in the second row of the Edit Objects section. The three types of merging available to you are Weld, Subtract, and Overlap. First, let's talk about why you would want to merge two objects in the first place. First off, you don't always have to. Let's say you are wanting to create a Sheriff's Badge with the signature circles at the end of the star points. If you select all these vectors, and cut a pocket path, you have achieved the look you are going for nice and simple. But when you attempt to make a profile path to carve an outline of the design, you may find it carving into the star around the circles. Merging shapes allows you to move forward designing with confidence that the shape will remain intact and carving the way you want it to. For this case, we will want to use the weld tool. This tool simply takes multiple shapes and combines them into one solid shape. By selecting all the vectors and hitting Weld, I have made the Sheriff's Badge one shape. You can continue to refine the shape further if you wish because your new shape is completely editable with all the transforming tools as well as node editing mode. Welding the shape not only makes the shape easier to manage in the software, it changes how the toolpath is calculated and the way the tool moves while carving. Creating a V-carve of the Sheriff's Star with the original six shapes, you can see it creates the star and then the circle separately. While it is the desired shape, the edges are not super clean and don't really connect. Contrast this with a V-carve done with the welded shape and you'll see that the tool follows the outside of your shape and leaves you with good clean edges to your carving, making no mistake that this is all one shape. This technique can be used on text as well, if you have a font that you would like to carve in one pass. Let's say I like this font, but want the letters to look more connected and smoother. You can turn the words into an object with the Convert to Curves button. Then I will use the node editing mode to make the tails smoothly go into the next letter. Once I'm happy with how they connect, I will select all the text except for the internal shapes like in the A and the E here. Selecting those would make them disappear. And then I will use the Weld tool. Now, when I carve it, you can see the nice fluid transitions between the letters in contrast with the very separate letter strokes the original font had. Now what if instead of combining shapes, you were wanting to take away some of the shape? This circle, for instance, can be turned into a crescent moon simply by duplicating the circle and moving it to the right. Selecting my original circle first, then the copied one, and hitting subtract leaves me with the crescent look I was hoping for. The order of selection is very important for the subtract tool. Whichever vectors you select first will be what remains while the last selection will be the area that is removed. You see, if I select the copied circle first, and then my original one, what stays is from the copied circle this time.
including more than two shapes, will result in the last shape selected being removed. If we add a star to our crescent moon setup, you see that only the star is subtracted and the two circles both remain. If, however, we group the second circle and the star, they act as a single shape, and the subtraction results in both the moon and the star remaining. A fine example of using the subtraction tool is when you want to create a space for text in a shape. If I want text in this star, but don't want the shape carved through it, I can create the text and align it up where I'd like it to be. Then I place a rectangle over the text, making sure it hits the edges of the shape. Then I select the star, hold down shift, and select the rectangle, then hit the subtract button. This creates two shapes around my text that carve beautifully. A popular version of monogramming uses this technique, with a letter as the background shape and a name or date as the text in the middle. To do this, simply choose the large letter or letters in the font you like. I suggest centering it to your material. Place the text you'd like in the middle. Now you want to change the large letters to an object using the Convert to Curves tool. I also suggest grouping it right away if you're using a fancy font like this one that has so many vectors. Once that is done, we put a rectangle around the smaller text, just like last time, then select the letters, and then the rectangle, and voila, you have a lovely carvable monogram style piece. And finally, we have the overlap tool. This tool keeps any areas of the shape that overlap and eliminates the rest. Let's say I have a square and I want to knock down the corners and make them more round. I can create a circle over top of it, select both vectors, and hit overlap. Now all that remains is the part of the square that was inside the circle. Honestly, this is not a tool that I have used very often, as editing nodes is a much better way to do this. But if you aren't comfortable with that just yet, this is one way that you could do it. You can also create a neat sliced up look on text using this feature. I took this text, converted it to curves, then placed a bunch of rectangles on top of it. Grouping the font together and then grouping the rectangles together, I'm able to select the text, then the rectangles, and hit overlap, creating a neat sliced up looking text. So that's all the merge object tools we have. Here's an example of the same two shapes using the different merging options. The top left is the original shape, to the right we have the welded shape, to the bottom left we have the subtracted shape, and the bottom right is the overlapped shape. I hope you found this overview helpful. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you find value in our content, and until next time, have fun and stay safe in the shop. Mm -hmm.